So today we added an optional board to our Analog Discovery 2. Uh, you can see the Analog Discovery 2 right here. This optional board is going to allow us to use a scope probe, which is much more conventional. Uh, be honest with you, I'm a little bit more comfortable with it because I've used it. And these wires uh, don't do well with uh, noise or high frequency signals. So uh, we'll talk about what the uh, analog discovery BNC option board does for us. We'll talk about some of the uh, issues behind um, using a scope with a ground reference instead of differential inputs and we'll give you an introduction to all that and see what's there. So let's first start with the discovery uh, module. What it ends up doing is taking some of these signals, the scope signals and the waveform generator signals uh, that are normally on this connector plugged into here and they come out to um, wires out here and it runs all those wires through there except it takes the scope channel 1, scope channel 2, wave gen channel 1 and wave gen channel 2 and runs them out to BNC connectors which is a standard way to terminate uh, waveform generators and things like that. So first thing we need is a couple different cables uh, cable styles. This is normally what you get on a waveform generator. Uh, you get a BNC connector on this side and you get two of these clip connectors on this side. So um, that's what we're going to be using for this and when we generate our signal on channel one of the wave gen it's going to come out on here. The second new uh, connector connection that I showed you before is a scope probe and a standard scope probe comes with a BNC connector. Um, it comes with this little clip end on it. Hopefully I'm holding that still enough for you to see it and it comes with a ground clip that you'll need also. And we also talked about the attenuation for 1x or 10x. This scope probe does have a uh, button for switching that. Okay, so um, I showed you the connections. By the way, you have to take this standard uh, cable uh, connector here that was on the Analog Discovery 2 and put it out here. It brings all the other channels that we're not using on this board out to here. It cuts these out here so you can't... You can't uh, use the output from both things at the same time, you two, one or the other. Um, I like this option, it's a little expensive. Uh, some people don't like it because it takes away the differential inputs of the uh, scope probe. So let's talk about grounding. That's probably the biggest thing um, that becomes an issue with the change. Uh, we didn't have to worry about grounding too much when the scope probes were just the wires without this this option board and we had the scope um, as differential inputs and you can stick your your leads wherever you want in the circuit and you won't run into trouble. Um, so let's uh, take a look at uh, sorry about that. Let's take a look at what we uh, a circuit, a simple circuit, maybe not realistic but a little simple circuit and let me bring that up here. Um, and this is just a schematic, it's not the real circuit because I think we can see what we want here. So if I take my differential input probes, I can put them, I can put the, the scope wires from the analog discovery too if I'm not using the uh, discovery BNC adapter board and I can put one input here and I can put the um, one input for channel one here and the other input for channel one here. I'm sort of hesitating to call it ground because it isn't ground with a differential input and I can put them there and I can measure them. I can also take the one channel one input here and the other channel one input here. They call them plus and minus and I can measure that without any trouble and I can do the same thing over here. So with differential inputs you're not limited to where you can stick your probes at all. It's never going to get you into trouble. Uh, unless you exceed the voltage that the scope can can handle. So, um, 
differential inputs aren't the norm they're very expensive and you don't want to do it just to avoid learning how to use something so uh, we don't have differential inputs anymore what we have is a scope probe that's ground reference so that little ground clip that i showed you on the scope probe is hooked to the ground earth ground on the equipment and in this circuit it has an earth ground um, but sometimes they're just put in there by convention by the person writing the schematic and sometimes the person doing the schematic can't know exactly how things are hooked up uh, depending on what's there so the problem is is if this is earth ground in other words if this supply that I hooked up in here and I'm using if the minus side is hooked to earth ground which a lot of times it is um, when I go to put my scope probe that's ground referenced in if I try and put the ground uh, side of my scope probe up here that's going to be at the same potential as this will be and that would cause a problem but that definitely causes a problem on AC input circuits um, so what we're telling you is when you use a ground reference probe if you have a earth ground something is grounded in your circuit that could be a power supply that could be test equipment um, that means that they all have to be connected at the same point so we don't have a choice anymore if this is an earth ground we have to put the the clip from the scope probe here and then I can only put my measuring point here or here or here to measure in the circuit I can't bring it right up and put it across this part some people think that's a big deal uh, we technicians have lived this like this forever we understand the circuit it's not a big deal if you don't understand the circuit it might be a little bit of a big deal um, and that's where it takes some knowledge to use some of the test equipment so I just want to warn you that the fact that we put this optional board in here and we are deciding to use it now we're limiting where our scope probe can be if this power supply or my test equipment also has uh, an earth ground uh, just so happens that this circuit uh, I'm not really sure I'd have to check my uh, documentation to see whether the supply ground for an analog discovery 2 is uh, earth ground or not but you can see you really got to think about your circuit so um, that set aside that's a very simple circuit we're not really gonna measure that or do that uh, what we're going to do is go back to our Analog Discovery 2 software. We're going to go to the Waveform Generator. I already started that software. And I'm going to create a sine wave on channel 1 of 1 volt peak to peak. Uh, that sine wave is going to come out on this cable. Uh, that I have here right we remember that it comes out on these two uh, clips and I'm gonna hook that up to my scope probe so ground to the ground side on the wave generator black to black most people can handle that and then the clip from the scope probe is gonna go on to here and just uh, for your information right now I have the scope probe hooked up to times one uh, let me get this so it sits in a real nice position. Um, always with electronics, worrying about all the cables and where they're hanging out and make sure they're not shorting out to anything. So we have that hooked up. I'm generating my signal. You can see the wave gen channel 1, 1 volt peak to peak. And it's a sine wave. If I go over to channel uh, the scope channel 1, I have that signal up. I'm going to move the... Uh, trigger signal up here a little bit but you can see I have that signal across there. I could make changes to convince you just believe me that signal wouldn't be there if I disconnect the signal generator from the scope and there it goes away and there it comes back on so hopefully that convinces you that I'm not fooling you with some kind of magic electronic magic and it's there so that gives you a really good introduction this scope probe is a much better uh, input probe than those wires at, at higher frequencies and it's what we're used to um, even cheap probes are better than the wires off the analog discovery too so the option might be worth the, the purchase uh, one last thing i want to prove to you here or i want to show you 
I have this scope probe and I'm going to change it from 1x to 10x okay and you can see it on here I'm going to do this but I'm going to change the picture so that you can see the scope output while I'm doing this so if I change this from 1x to 10x what that's doing is it's attenuating the signal or it's dividing the signal by 10 let me fix up my uh, trigger level signal so that stabilizes this and you might say well that's a different signal and well it's 10 times less than it was before the exact same signal but the voltage is divided by 10 and, and did that so uh, if you remember correctly uh, if I come over here to the analog discovery to software and I click down on this uh, setup icon this gear icon here um, there's some options in here and some of the different options that are available to me are uh, changing the color but the one I'm interested in is attenuation and if I change that for 10x what that's doing is telling me that I'm matching my scope probe attenuation with what the software thinks so that I don't have to go through the mental math all the time to keep on multiplying everything times 10. Um, that's nice. That's a really nice feature. Uh, I will tell you the scope probe that we have on here. As I also mentioned in another video, really good scope probes and really good scopes have a little metal uh, point that uh, hangs out from the scope probe and when you turn it onto the BNC connector it rubs against the metal and it automatically adjusts between 1x and 10x for you so that you don't have to switch that over this is a cheaper scope probe so I have to go into my test equipment and set that up automatically uh, the one nice thing that a 10x probe does for you you can measure a voltage that tends 10 times higher than the maximum input voltage for the scope setting that you have. So um, I hope, hopefully, that gives you a little bit of an idea about this this concept of ground or earth ground and whether uh, the test equipment's leads are connected to earth ground and you have to know that status for all the test equipment you have in the circuit because we have to hook all the grounds in the circuit together to have things operate correctly also gives you uh, some kind of introduction into scope probes treat them nicely they're very expensive even the cheap ones uh, so treat them nicely and set them up correctly and things should work out for you hopefully uh, that gives you some insight into what's happening and we'll see you the next time